So if your home is anything like mine, your kitchen is a place where everyone seems to gather, whether it's your family, people you're entertaining, that's just like the hangout spot, right? Between cooking meals and chatting over snack time, it can be a really well-loved family space. But this room also has a potential to be a major clutter collector. So let's simplify your kitchen for a way better experience in day-to-day. -day. It's so important to remember the purpose of the room. Kitchens tend to accumulate lots of clutter because people simply spend time there and pass through them. But it doesn't mean that car keys, wallets, toys, mail, homework, and all the things need to land on your countertops every single day. So the general purposes, if you think about your kitchen, are for what? They're for cooking, cleaning, gathering, and connecting. So if things that don't belong are constantly ending up in your kitchen, you've got to establish drop zones in other areas of your house specific to the items that are otherwise landing on your kitchen counters. And a big part of this is keeping your entryway tidy and creating different drop zones within your entryway so that all those things don't land where you don't want them. So keep your eyes peeled because in an upcoming video, I'm talking all things entryway and I've got some fresh, unique, creative ideas to help you streamline that space, which again is going to make a world of difference when it comes to your kitchen. Seasonal kitchen items, holiday cookie cutters, pumpkin carving tools, grilling equipment, turkey basters, roasting pans, seasonal dish towels, and the like. Those don't need to live in your kitchen 365 days of the year. So store them away in bins and label them for when you do need them the two, three, four months out of the year, or even a few days of the year. My holiday cookie cutters live in my holiday decor bin right next to my Christmas tree stuff in a little Ziploc bag. It's super simple and streamlined and I don't have to dig past my holiday cookie cutters every time I need to reach for a spatula. I'm telling you, it's a, so refreshing. You open up so much space within your kitchen and it's like a breath of fresh air. My husband and I used to use a food dehydrator when we were into that kind of thing a long time ago. And instead of it living in our kitchen all year round, we only used it during the summer when fresh fruit and vegetables were more accessible because that's what we dehydrated. Hydrated. So I ultimately decided to store it in the garage when not in use, and it just simplified things. Simplify your Tupperware. If you are afraid to get a concussion every time you open your Tupperware cabinet, it's probably time you need to pare some of this down. Pull all of it out, get rid of the unused, broken, the cheap plastic stuff you held onto just in case, but you haven't used, and simplify. Do a quick inventory, make sure all of them have their matching lids. By the way, why do lids always go missing? You know, there's like a sock fairy in the laundry room where socks go missing, but I think there's also a Tupperware lid fairy that lives in our homes and steals our lids. So I always do a quick inventory on lids too, and if they don't have their matching lids, I just hop on Amazon and order one or two more. Or maybe like me, you have glassware and sometimes those plastic lids that go on top, they crack, they break. So instead of replacing the entire set, you can just get a couple lids and keep it simple. And as far as inventory goes, we have enough in our household that takes us for about a week. Now we tend to do meal planning and meal prepping on Sundays, which means sometimes on Sunday nights when we're finished, all of our containers are used and it is a beautiful thing. We don't have tons of excess after that. So do what works for you and your lifestyle. Maybe cut your Tupperware down from 40 pieces to 20 and see how it goes. If your dishes pile up throughout the week and you spend what feels like an entire Saturday scrubbing your dishes, this next tip is for you. And it's one place that most people don't consider when it comes to simplifying their kitchen. It is this, declutter some of your excess dishes or at least store some of them away. And here's what I mean by that. But what happens when we go to reach for that plate in the cabinet and we're all out? We are forced to do dishes. So this also is really great at kind of forcing us into routine and being more consistent with keeping up with cleaning the dishes. If you have less dishes, you're gonna to have to clean them more regularly in order for them to be accessible and ready to use next time you have a snack or a meal. And it prevents those dish pileups that we're so sick and tired of anyway. I did this years ago, I cut our dishes in half and it did take an adjusting period for everyone but I'm telling you, it's been a game changer. And if you're like, Katie, well, what do I do if I have guests over if, or if I host family and friends at my house, keep enough for you and your family for maybe like a day's worth of dishes in your cabinet. And then you're gonna put the rest somewhere else. You can see this corner cabinet right here, right next to our dining table that hosts paper plates for on occasion when I host people that I'm like really good friends with that don't need the, you know, fancy dishes. <laughs> and I also store the regular dishes in there as well. And it's accessible, it's an easy walk. So maybe if you don't have a spot nearby like I do, you put it in a garage or a basement, you know, for the occasion that you do have people over or just use paper plates. I mean, they're not here for your dishes. They're here for you and your food. Get rid of duplicates and unitaskers. I think unitaskers are the bane of my existence. They literally make me angry. <laughs> 
what a unitasker is. It is a kitchen tool or kitchen gadget. They're typically like really well marketed to people and they only do one thing. They only serve one purpose. Think like an apple core or apple slicer or banana slicer. You put the banana in, you cut it, you put that, put it on top of the apple, you push it down and then you get slices, right? Guess what? A knife does the same thing and it's so much more versatile. Because it's a unitasker, it tends to get rarely used as well. So you need to decide is the benefit of keeping this unitasker, does that outweigh the burden of letting it go and freeing up space in this utensil drawer or on this utensil stand that sits on my kitchen counter. For me, I got rid of it and I never looked back. Now let's talk about duplicates. We all have our favorites of things. So we used to have between eight to 10 spatulas in different sizes and different shapes and colors. And then I realized after paying some attention, I really only used two of them. Initially, I was afraid to go down to the two I used because I thought, well, what if I'm cooking and these are dirty and I need another one? But just like we talked about with the dish concept, letting go, you can always wash that spatula and wash that dish when you need it again. And that's exactly what I do. It takes less than 30 seconds to wash one dish and one spatula, and then I get right back into cooking. And again, the benefit of letting that go, freeing up space and simplifying my kitchen far outweighs hanging on to something and just keeping a cluttered space. Especially when it comes to kitchen items, people tend to hang on to these extras and unitaskers and things of that nature just in case. But my favorite motto is choose space over just in case, and it's made a world of difference. Take advantage of vertical space. While it's not necessary to maximize every nook and cranny in your kitchen, I still think it can be very helpful to take advantage of that vertical space that's otherwise sitting empty. And there are so many different organizational tools that can help us with this. Over the door organizers are one of my favorite ways to do this. So if you have a traditional door or traditional pantry and you just wish you could maximize more of that space, get one of these. It doesn't have to be fancy. I've even had students use over the door. Technically, they're shoe organizers, but you can use them for a multitude of things other than shoes, and they work magnificently in pantry. So don't think they have to cost an arm and a leg, or that you have to pay tons of money in order to maximize that space. If you don't have a door, like again, I don't have a traditional pantry, so I have no pantry door. I just have cabinet space I use within my kitchen. So you could open that door, you could screw something in that kind of services the same concept with different shelves to maximize the indoor of that otherwise empty cabinet door. And these are really helpful for storing any food related items, spices, packaged food, snacks, and the like. When your kitchen is one of the busier spaces in your home, it can feel really tough to feel like you're not on top of it and struggle being consistent. But maybe consistency is really where your struggle lies. So click the video on your screen now to learn about how you can be more consistent with your decluttering efforts and get the results you need.